Hello, everybody. This is Move Easy with Pia. Uh, it's December 8th, 2020. Eight. We're starting our online class in the ordinary fashion, um, online on Zoom and later on YouTube. Just lying on your back. Your knees can be bent or you can have your legs extended. Uh, you could may, might want to put your legs up on a chair or a couch. And just slowing down and allowing yourself to notice where you are and why you came. Just breathing in and breathing out, watching the breath as it changes, but without trying to change it. For breath work, we're gonna do um, uh, re resistance breathing with a strap. So. Go ahead and breathe here and notice that and remember how it feels to breathe without a strap so that you can compare it to what's going to happen a little later when you breathe into a strap. Bring your arms behind your head, bend your elbows, hands behind your head, they're stacked or the fingers are interlaced. Veg vagus nerve reset. So without moving anything else but your eyeballs and your eyes can be open or closed. Shift your eyeballs to the right and wait and watch for an involuntary sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. Come back to center and shift your eyeballs to the left. And wait or a sigh, swallow, yawn, or go. Suzanne said she can't be here today. She has a dentist appointment. But she's gonna come, she'll be here next time. Now do this uh, two more times, right, left, right, left, without my cueing. We're going to stay here and do head ramping so your arms are in the same shape, same place. And then just press the back of the skull, the, the base of the back of the skull into the mat, into your hands and your mat. The skull slides along the mat away from your shoulders. And you're going to hold for a breath or two and then release and then do four more head ramps.
We're gonna um, we're gonna do resistive or resistance breathing. <clears throat> so go ahead and get a strap and wrap it around your a strap, or if you found a wider belt uh, or something else in your house um, that would work with this. Um, the strap is really too skinny, but it's what we got. So strap it around just underneath your um, breasts and um, make it snug and lie back down. And your arms can be beside you. And then you're just going to inhale and exhale and feel the expansion of the breath and the diaphragm which is a muscle into the strap. So it meets the strap on your inhale and then it retreats from the strap on your X. Because this is a, there's a resistance to the, where the breath is going, um, you're actually expanding the capacity of the breath and also strengthening the muscle, the diaphragm muscle. And the lungs. And a couple more of those. Maybe during the week you can come up with a wider band that you could use for this same purpose. And now we're going to do um, hypopressives. Let's do the um, the bridge hypopressive. We'll do it twice. Remember, your heels are on the floor, and your feet are um, dorsiflexed, so the toes are towards the ceiling. This actually helps you uh, reach um, the pelvic floor. Your arms are beside the your hips. But when you come up into bridge, Kathy can demonstrate this, when uh, you come up into bridge, your arms go overhead at the same time. And then they come back down. That's while you have no breath. That's what you'll be doing. But let's do three breaths first, three, four breaths, inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. Third breath, inhale. And exhale all the way out. Hold your breath out, no breath. Lift your hips, arms overhead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, come down if you need to, 13, 14. Inhale and then exhale, come on down. We'll do one more, same thing. And uh, starting with three breaths, inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Last breath, inhale, exhale, all the way out. Now, no breath, hips up, arms overhead, no breath, hold your breath out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, that's it, inhale, 
And come on down. I do. I used to teach a lot of uh, pelvic floor work or core work. Um, now I, the hypopressives are the thing I think is best for core work. And well, we do a lot of core. There's all, also a lot of core work we do and everything else we do, but just directly core work and pelvic floor work, I combine them in hypopressives. So if you want to do more, if you have incontinence or think you might want to avoid incontinence, bowel or um, uh, fecal incontinence, uh, if you have a prolapsed organ, uh, the hypopress increase your um, schedule of hypopressives. Let's go on to footwork. We're gonna do the six point release with the therapy ball. You, this is a standing pose. Uh, Kathy's gonna write on her foot and show you all the six points. Uh, and then we'll get up and do this. You could also do it seated if it's hard for you to stay standing. Number one is just below the, the ball, the metatarsal ball of the foot, right there, about there. Mm -hmm. One, and then below that in the middle of the arch, number two. Placement two. Number three is down by the heel. It's probably a little, there's a, probably a little more space between all of the one, two, and three, but um, approximately. And then the fourth one is to the outside of the middle. So four, and then to the inside of the middle is five. And then six is uh, just below the big toe mount. So we're gonna press the ball and uh, wait. I'm gonna time you guys uh, for I think 15 seconds will or 20, let's do 20 seconds. I think the last time 15 seemed a, like a small amount. 20 seconds, you're gonna be standing. You're gonna put your ball um, uh, at location number one. Well, you might as well, you can start on your right foot. I try to start on the right on everything so that I, you know, so it's a pattern that I can count on. Hold on. I'm going to wait for Kathy to set up here. Thank you, Kathy. One therapy ball, uh, preferably the plus size. The, I think the alpha is a little bit too large for footwork. So people will be near a wall or a chair or something because this is balancing work. Uh, a kind of balancing work. So you want to have a safe, safe point. Okay, first location. And the heel is on the floor. And we're going to start in time for 20 seconds. And just pressing down. Not roll, you're not rolling anywhere. Um, Emily Splitchell, who's my favorite go-to person for foot, foot, foot advice. Um, this is her movement. And she says that rolling might create guarding in the foot. She just says compression, compression only. And now go to the second position, which is in the middle of the foot. Well, that's annoying. That was not it. Keep going. I was trying to find a better sound, but then you, apparently it, you have to hear it <laughs> to choose it. So. So I can't do it during the middle of the... Okay, that's really annoying. Now, that was 20 seconds in the middle. Now next, the next one is down right in front of the... Um... Oh, that's awful. I bet I'll do that one. Um, right in the middle of the... Uh, in front of the uh, heel or the calcaneus. Okay, now 20 seconds. Sorry that I'm playing with these sounds, but I, want, I thought I could easily find a better one. And just pressing down, it's called compression. Go back to the center and to the outside of the center. So back to the center, and then a little bit to the outside of the foot. And that is number, position number four, location four. Some of you may find a little bit of, maybe a little sensitive there. 
Emily Squitchell suggests doing this, this footwork se session once or twice a day. It takes about five minutes. Num position number five is uh, still in the center, but to the inside of the arch. And the last position, number six, is just underneath the big toe mound. This is also a place where a lot of people hold a lot of tension. So remember, if, you, uh, if it's too much, you could move it back a little bit, down a little bit, and see if you could find a, a position that's not in the same neighborhood, but not quite as intense. It's always an option for therapy ball work. <laughs> Okay, let's switch sides and start at number one. Just underneath that, the metatarsal mound in the middle. Just pressing down. Breathing. Standing up tall if you can, just so you get to practice another chance to practice good posture. Number, number two is just down below that in the middle, in the middle of the arch. This is the plantar arch. If you have plantar fascia, fascia plantar fasciitis, sorry, uh, um, or any kind of sensitivity or discomfort in your feet, this, this series may help that. It helps with balance. It helps with proprioception, which is the, our ability to perceive where we are, what we're standing, how we're standing, what we're standing on. Okay, one, two, uh, we're on number one, two, three, three. We're on number three, just in front of the calcaneus, in the middle, still in the middle. President-elect uh, President Biden um, sprained his, the muscles in the middle of the foot. So let me tell you where that is, just for fun. So there's the heel and there's the front of the foot. And then in the, in the between the heel and the front of the foot are some bones that kind of hook the back and the front. It's right in there and up. And that's what he sprained when he was chasing his dog. Yeah. Now, number four is to the outside of the center of the arch. Then you go across to the inside of the center of the arch, number five. And then the last one, is just below the big toe mount. Okay, um, get rid of the therapy ball walk around and see if uh, what it feels like uh, when you've given the bottom of your feet this much attention and stay there with your chair because we're going to do something we're going to do um, 
We're gonna do some step backs, basically, with a chair in a minute. We're gonna do some get ups. We're gonna do a get up preparation review. So find a chair or a ledge, or uh, it could be a bookcase shelf, but not if, it's, if it would fall over on you. And um, turn the chair around, Kathy, I think, and hold onto the back of the chair. And I would put the chair up against um, either the wall or the um, couch so that it's not just free floating in the room. And now you are going to hold onto the chair. No, oh, we're, we're gonna do step backs. No, you're, we're gonna do step backs first. I, I'll do a, we could do the, we could do the, uh, well, I'm gonna do step backs. So face the chair, face the back of the chair. Hold on to the back of the chair. Okay. I see what you're doing. And come back. Find, find. And now, the trick is to find the, 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 the optimal distance between you and the chair. But that, and that may take a little bit of fin finesse. But now, Kathy, I think you should come a little forward, Kathy. That's my guess. Just come a little forward. Now, just uh, bend both knees, bend both knees, and drop the right knee behind you onto the floor. So it's a step back and the left knee stays over the ankle and then you come on up. You can do this without chair, without the support of the chair if you, if you dare. <laughs> so we we'll do three more of those, stepping back and standing up, stepping back. So it's lunging to standing and then standing to lunging, back, back step lunge. Now, Kathy, try to be sure that your front knee is directly over the ankle. Yeah, so you don't want to bring that forward. There, it's more like, more like that. Switch sides. I love this. You, could, you can do this on, on your bathrooms. You can do this just before you brush your teeth. Hold on to something. It's nice holding on to something because, but you have to get the right proportion. So you have to find the place that allows you to step back. And you don't have to drop your knee entirely. You can drop almost to the floor and then bring it up. Three more times. Down and up. And step backs. You could also do step ups, by the way. So this is, you can do step backs and you can do lunge, forward lunges, but we'll do that another day. Let's do the next one we're gonna do is let's do the deep squat. So find a brick in case you need one. And this is different than some of the other squats we do. This is just dropping the butt behind you and as far down as you can and it might, so you can start with putting a brick behind you, between your legs behind you, and then dropping your butt down and sitting on the brick. That's, that's, uh, that's the modified deep squat. And sit tall while you're here. Nice, yep, sit tall. And then if you want to, you can make the brick narrower Couple, couple different directions. So here's, so now you're down a little farther, right? Good. And then now you're down a little farther. And you stay here. So stay here as long as you can. I'm, I've read, I, you know, I think actually staying here for half an hour is the optimum, but that might not be available to you that time, kind of time. Now, do it without a brick, Kathy. And so this, this is the deep, these are very supported deep squat and then the deep squat without any support. If your heels lift when you do this, then you wanna put something like a, a rolled up yoga mat or a rolled up towel or something, a mobility strip, you wanna put it underneath your heels so they're resting on something. So here you are breathing. This is great for your back. 
This is great for your get up. So whenever you're, you, um, these are these are all actually specially designed for Parvan who ask if we could help her get up and down off the floor. What do I, what's left on the list? Um, the next thing we're gonna do, go ahead and do is come down to all fours near your chair and the bottom of the chair should be nearby or a couch or anything actually, a stool. But you just need to be, this is the basic way while you're getting strength in your glutes and uh, getting some mobility also in the hips and the ankles, uh, this is the way to come on up. So you're on your hands and knees, you're near something, some sort of a, a, a prop to assist, and then you're gonna come on up just by using your, putting your hand there and then bringing one leg forward and coming up. So try that a couple of times. You're starting on the floor, hands and knees. You wanna get up off the floor, you put your hand on the chair. So face, instead of twerking yourself around like you do, you're doing, Kathy, just face, go ahead and just face the, face, the, face the chair when you start. Face the chair to start. Okay. Now, arm on the chair. And then just, you're gonna to step towards the chair with one leg and then bring the other leg up. And there you are, up all the way up to standing. trying it with the other leg. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It should, should do. And I noticed you tried it with both hands. You can do both hands too. Well, that's because the leg didn't work. Yeah, that leg didn't work. Oh, okay. I need to strengthen it. Yeah. So doing this will also strengthen the legs for the get up. The next thing we're going to do, the last thing of the get up series is the bird dog at the wall. So once again, you're gonna be facing a wall and you're gonna put one hand in front of you on the wall. So there's, um, there's the experiment with how far you need to be away from the wall. You can come forward with a hip hinge. You can, maybe you can start with your arms out in front of you like an arm's length of, and plus a little more. Now come forward with a hip hinge can you, can you reach the wall with your hand? You have to have your hand, one hand solidly on the wall, otherwise you would be really unstable. And so one hand is on the wall, the other, hand, other, the other arm is up in front of you towards the wall, crawling up the wall and the opposite leg. So this is the bird dogness of it. Try to keep your hips and your shoulders even. So drop your right leg, Kathy, drop your right hip. Yeah. Oops, okay. And now switch sides. So remember, you're there, that's nice. This is bird dog on the wall. It's, uh, it's actually harder in some ways than bird, egg, bird dog on the floor. Just a couple more times, right and left. Right arm, left leg, and then the opposite, left arm, right leg. Drop your right hip, Kathy. All right, try to keep your hip even, that's a challenge. And then switch sides again, and one more last set. Okay, and now go ahead and sit in your chair. We're gonna do a little bit of footwork in the chair. And um, the reason we're doing, one of the reasons we're doing this is because I thought of something I haven't done in a long time that I really like. So let's start with that actually. If you're sitting down, you take your right, it's, this is stretching the top of the foot. So you're gonna take your right foot behind you along the outside of the chair. Okay. with the top of the foot on the floor. I love this, it feels so good. And then you're gonna just, your toes are there. You're gonna press down, press the top of the foot down as far as it can go into the floor. 
and, and hopefully enjoy a stretch, which is hard to get, hard to find. Uh, Hero's Pose does some of this too, but um, find it on the top of your foot. It has to be seated. You can't be standing or floor seated. It has to be chair. This is a, definitely a chair seated position. Go ahead and switch to the other side. This is just, I just call this a top of the foot stretch. It's, uh, it's hard to come by. So um, this is the easiest way to get there. Good. Now, did you put your foot on a brick because that, so that you could um, feel lined up with your other leg? Is that what you yeah. did? Yes. It looks, it looks good. I think it's a good option. And I just feel more stable this way. Yeah. And press the top of the foot into the floor. Hold. Enjoy. I think the top of the foot is enjoying it. And do one more set. I love this. It's available, you know, if you're just if you're sitting in a chair at your office. This this foot, well, you have to have your shoes off. I, I don't think it would work. Oh, it might work. It would work almost work with your shoes on. It, it would depend on the shoe. It would depend on the shoe, actually, how flexible the top of the shoe was. My boots would work. You get a chance to see um, be be uh, seated and with good posture. And then let's let's go ahead and I'm going to skip a few on a few that are on after you finish this I'm going to skip a few and we're going to go up to standing with um, your half round. So if you don't have a half round, uh, you can order one online. They're not very expensive, um, and they're easily available. If you if you don't have one, you can use a brick. If you don't have a brick, you can use a book. Thick. We're gonna do a six way, three way ankle stretch. My favorite, okay. That's the half round. Kathy has the half, half round. I love my half round, I have two of them. I have one in the kitchen, I love it. I, that, I have two in, the kitchen, two in the kitchen and one in the bathroom. And then I stretch my, just do a basic calf stretch um, all the time, a lot, a lot of the time. Oh yeah, me too, just right. the basic. So, so, the, so that's the one, but this one you can do too, obviously, but you know, when I'm in, when I'm keep peeling carrot, you know, cutting carrots, which I don't of course do now, but when I'm doing something like that, I don't want to, I don't want to also be concentrating on this movement, which is a little more complicated than just a basic calf stretch. So, but you start out, it looks like a basic calf stretch and your ankle is, um, uh, you're going to, you're going to actually move, flex, flex the ankle forward towards the foot, the toes. And keep doing that. So you can pump it a little if you want. But remember, uh, so the knee comes forward too because the ankle came forward, but the knee is not the mover or initiator. It's all at the ankle. It's really important to make sure that you're working at the ankle. And just stay here or you can, like I say, you can pump it a little bit, pump forward, forward, forward. This is a flexion, an ankle flexion. And then next, you're going to do the same thing, except it's gonna be a little bit to the right of the foot. So, It's flexion, forward flexion, a little bit angled to the, to the outside of the foot. I shouldn't have said right because it's easier to remember when you say outside and then I, we'll go to inside next time. So it's forward and to the outside. And just remember you can pump a little.
and then go ahead and come back. And now forward flexion angled a little bit to the inside of the foot. This is probably the smallest range of motion you're going to find on these three of these three positions. If you have ankle issues, if you've ever sprained your ankle, if you have balance issues, this is a really nice uh, part of a, a practice that will help address that. Switch sides. Forward ankle flexion. Purely forward. So the knee comes forward too. The knee will come forward with this. Most people's knees will come forward. But it's the ankle that's bringing it forward. The ankle flexion brings the knee forward. If this bothers your knee, just uh, reduce the, the uh, flexion, reduce the range of motion here. Okay, that was forward. Now we're gonna do it to the outside. So it's forward still, but a little bit to the outside of the foot. Um, And now the last thing is to do it to a little bit to the inside. So you're still, it's a, still a forward flexion with a little angle out to the inside of the foot. You can pump if you want, or you can hold. We're doing, we're, we're here for 30 seconds. You could do a lot more of these. You could repeat this whole segment. If we, we're always in this class, well, I guess it's true of all classes, right? We're always running out of time, right? We're always, counting down from the very beginning of the class. <laughs> See how much we can get, uh, get in, into this one, this one class. Okay, now let's do short foot. We haven't done that in a long time. Uh, short foot is great for uh, plantar fasciitis and balance and um, Proprioception, you know, um, uh, learning to feel. We're going to do short foot with, with core activation, actually, which means it's a split stance short foot. So um, that's yeah. um, available, that platform. So you're going to stand with one foot forward. Let's say the right foot forward and the left foot back a little bit. Maybe not back that far. You want to, it's not, this is not, this should be comfortable. Um, but now what you're going to do is lift, uh, find your tripod. So find the tripod on the bottom of the foot. That's the triangle that has uh, the, just below the big toe, just below the little toe and at the heel. So that's the tripod. Find that, just find it with your awareness and then lift your toes and then engage your core uh, as far down as you can engage it, almost to, down toward the pubic, pubic bone. And now with the core engaged, drop your feet and spread them and press your toes, toe pads into the floor. We're gonna stay here for 40 seconds. Just stay here and breathe. And see, you can, you can bring your attention to the arch, the medial arch, then you can bring your attention to the core and then just go between those two points with your attention. 
So you've pressed your toe pads into the floor and they stay pressed in. Short foot. You should feel the arch. Well, you should feel the core because we've activated the core. And come on back. Switch sides. The left foot, find the tripod first. So this is a split stance short foot. Find the tripod, find, lift your, toe, lift your toes, engage your core as low as it can go, transverse abdominals. And once you've engaged them, drop your toe pads and press them into the floor. And now see if you can notice, become aware of the core, become aware of the medial arch, come then go back to the core and go back to the medial arch. If you feel out of balance, you need to bring your, your stance, your split stance closer together. Just so you know, if you start to feel out of balance. And go ahead and stop that. And the last thing we're gonna do before we go up on the wall is um, uh, heel lifts. So you need the back of a chair to do this. Uh, you, uh, you can use your platform this time, Kathy, and you need one therapy ball um, nearby because first we're gonna do heel lifts without the therapy ball and then we'll do it later with the therapy ball. You just parallel your, your parallel feet, standing, good posture, and then lift your heels off the, flo the, the floor and then put them back on, just lift up and down. So there is a study recently sa that said that th these, these are calf raises and that they're better than the calf stretches, the runner's calf stretches that we, we see so commonly. But this, this kind of work is actually, um, uh, creates more strength and mobility in the ankle. Go ahead and put the ball, the therapy ball, between the ankles as far back as you can get it. And it's going to, you're going to hold it there and lift, do the same thing. Up you go. And down you come. And up and down. And up and down. Hold on to that ball. <laughs> if you don't have a therapy ball, you can use a tennis ball. If you don't have a tennis ball, you could use one sock scrunched up inside another sock. Okay, let's go to back bend at the wall. So here you're gonna stand with your back to the wall, a little bit away from the wall, not, not really far away, but far enough away so that you can stand in good posture and then bring your arms up and over um, you with and put your hands or your fingers. Some, may, some people won't be able to reach the entire palm, but put it, the, it on the wall behind you. And be sure and keep your, um, Keep your legs, your ankles, and your feet out of it. So they are, they are aligned underneath you. And the, the back band is, is at the uh, thoracic spine. If you start to feel like your pelvis is jutting out, uh, bring it back in so it's over, the pelvis is over the knees and then focus on a back bend that's higher up in your thoracic spine. And if you start to feel this in the lumbar spine, you have to make this smaller or just, or focus, focus higher. Come on down, unravel out of that. And then we're gonna do a, a side bend on the right. 
spine twist on the right, sorry. So you're gonna face, um, you're gonna face right shoulder on the wall, not near the wall, right leg forward, left leg back, bend your arms, rotate the thoracic spine, the upper spine, and uh, stay there and let the arms and the, the hands and the forearms create stability and structure for a spine twist that does not involve the pelvis. So the pelvis and the hips are facing forward, but the thoracic spine is rotating. This is really good for you. It's a really good for bone building. And we're, gonna, we're timing it so that giving the bones a chance to develop the osteocytes, a chance to develop new bones. If anyone wants to uh, let me know, I'll send them um, a class by Fishman about yoga and osteoporosis. Switch sides, everybody. Left shoulder, no on the wall. This is one of uh, Fishman's poses, actually. Left leg forward, right leg back, and then bend your elbows and rotate your thoracic spine. Keep your pelvis uh, forward, facing forward. And just breathing and enjoying the rotation. Come on back. Come on down to the floor. The first thing we're gonna do is proning. If you don't like this, just do a child's pose. Proning starts on your hands and knees. And you're gonna drop, so you're, and you keep, keep your hips up high, but then you drop your arms down and cross your hands in front of you. And then rest your head on your hands or you might have to have a brick or something under your head. Um, the arms are, it's not, uh, let's see, that is the hypopressive. We're gonna do proning, which is the arms are straight ahead. Just like this, just breathing in and out, breathing uh, as deep as you can. If you had uh, COVID, uh, you, you and your lungs were congested, you might want to take this shape, breathe deeply, and cough. Just a tip for those, those of you who, uh, who, who might find themselves in a COVID situation or they know someone else that has COVID. This is, this, I, this is one of the things that a Florida doctor says they're doing the ICU for COVID. Patience. We're here for we're here for forty seconds, just breathing. And now go ahead and come down onto onto the um, floor for back extension for the Pilates um, back extension, prone back extension. Your arms are by your side. You might have something, a couple of washcloths under your forehead. Your arms are at your side, palms up. You're going to inhale to prepare and then exhale. Just lift your chest, your head, your arms. Remember the head is in a, um, and especially Parvan, remember that the head is in a um, head ramping position. So you're, you're, it's the, the base of the spine is crawling back up towards uh, the wall in front of you. And then go ahead and take an inhale to prepare to come down and an exhale to come on down. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna come up and do an airplane. So arms out to the side, take an inhale to prepare. And an exhale, lift the arms, chest, head. Take another inhale to prepare to do airplane. And then an exhale, come to airplane. 
and you're going to stay here uh, for 40 seconds if you can come down if you need to and while you're here you may want to take your chest up just a little higher if you can and just stay here and breathe come out of the, out of it if you need to it could be this your your lift could be much smaller than Kathy's just any little lift you get off the floor is just fine. And take an inhale to prepare to come down and an exhale to come down. Bring your arms out into an airplane again. We're gonna do this thoracic release that I love that I always, almost always do with this. I can't say always, but almost always. Look to the right, take your right leg up and over behind your other leg. So remember the hips and the legs can do anything uh, to get a big twist in the upper back. The upper back stays stable facing the floor. If you're lucky, you'll get an upper back um, adjustment, chiropractic adjustment as you do this. If you're just starting to do this, it might take a while to get come to that kind of um, flexibility in your upper back. Go ahead and come on back. And switch sides. Look left. Left leg up and over behind the uh, right leg. And just keep your left armpit on the floor. Remember the left armpit, the chest, everything's facing the shoulders. The upper, upper body is facing flat on the floor. And the lower body, the hips are rotating. And releasing the upper back actually is what has what's happening here. Okay, that's the end of this. We're gonna go into find your way onto your back for um, the yoga nidra part of the uh, um, class, and I want to check in with Caitlin and see if she's okay with re reading this. Maybe she, you can either chat with me or you can unmute Caitlin. Are you there? If she's not there, obviously that's that means she's not available. <laughs> I see her picture. Yeah. Well, she's in. You know, she's on. Long, but she's not. Oh, there she is. How good. So let me say, Caitlin, when I do this, um, I don't like to look at my face while I'm reading, so I turn turn it off until later. And so, but Caitlin's gonna lead us in this. And then afterwards, I'll pick up uh, with the, the movement and the closing the class. Okay. I think I'm gonna lie down and do this. That would be nice. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, so lie, I'm reading this, but uh, lie somewhere comfortable and make sure that you're warm enough. Um, I will guide you. Um, to systematically move your attention through the uh, points that I mentioned without moving them. Um, just start by, uh, begin by breathing in and out. Now bring your awareness to the center of your eyebrows the center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right hand, thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, 
elbow, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This concludes a 61 point guided meditation. Um, thank you. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> What do you want to say now, Mom? No, I'm, I'm going to say, so let's go ahead and wiggle, start to wiggle, bring yourself back to the room. And um, stretch, stretch your legs out in one direction. And you may, you may want to extend your legs if you were bending your knees. Stretch, stretch them out along the mat. Arms overhead, trying to create a little space between your, little more space between your rib cage and your pelvis. Just wiggling and stretching, right side, left side, wiggling your fingers and your toes, wiggling, circling your wrists and your ankles. Ah. <laughs> Hug your right knee to your chest and your left knee to your chest. Hug both knees to your chest and rock from side to side. And then whenever you're ready, just roll all the way over to the right or to the whatever side, toward, towards me, towards the camera and using your bottom arm as a pillow and your top arm, you're gonna use it to bring yourself up to seated, press again into your palm, into the floor and then come on up on your side into a uh, floor seated position. Uh, unmute yourself, everybody. Remove, remove the spotlight. I'm going to put my my view on gallery. I can't change your view, but if you want to see everybody, which is very nice, uh, at the end, uh, you may want to change your view to gallery. Okay. And everybody, come into prayer pose. Put your hands together. Press them together. This is a little bit of shoulder work. Actually press really strongly. And then go ahead and release that and relax the, the, the palms, but still touching each other. You're gonna lift the occipital ridge up towards the ceiling. It's like head ramping so that you can roll the skull over C1, cervical vertebra one, forward, 
rolling forward, bowing, acknowledging and honoring the light in each of us. And then recognizing that we're all one light. And now we're going to close the class by saying to each other, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you. I thank hope. You. Thank you, thank Kathy. You. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, I hope everyone gets a chance to do a class online on, on the YouTube channel um, uh, sometime before the next class. During the week, yeah. During the week.